Uh, welcome everyone. Oh wow, it's loud. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Nadir said, my name is Juan Pablo Madrigal Chanchi from the EPFL. Today I'll be presenting Monte level Marco Chen Monte Carlo using maximum couple proposals. I should mention that this is joint work with my advisor, Professor Fabio Nobile from the CSQI lab. So let's get started. So introduction. So what is a Bayesian inverse problem? Well, given some data y that we can model as f of theta plus e, where theta is a set of random parameters with some known distribution in the prior, f is some map from a parameter space w to a data space y uh, that can be understood as the mathematical model of the physical phenomena that generated the data, and e is some random noise with known distribution in the noise. And the goal of a Bayesian inverse problem is to sample theta this set of parameters here, condition on y from a posterior distribution mu y uh, that can be written in terms of the likelihood times prior, where this likelihood uh, measures the misfit between the recorded data y and f of theta. And again, mu prior um, encodes the information that we have on theta before any data has been observed. There's usually two caveats uh, associated. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting already. Uh, yes. Just to make so, in terms of dimensions, you make the assumption that capital Y is finite dimensional? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm assuming right now that the capital Y is a finite dimensional. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, makes sense. R n for some given n. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now there are two caveats associated to Bayesian inverse problems. The first one is that F, this mathematical model of the physical process, uh, cannot always be evaluated analytically, but most of the time it gets evaluated numerically with some discretization parameter that we would denote by capital L with some high accuracy, but also with some cost. And this presents a slightly different problem in the sense that we, we assume that, they, that the data Y uh, follows this FL of theta, this discretized version of the of the forward model, uh, which in turn induces this discretized posterior uh, mu y L, which has this form right here, uh, with the understanding that this mu y L converges towards mu y, the original posterior, as our act, as our uh, discretization becomes more and more uh, accurate. The second caveat is that we this normalization constant here is intractable, and as such, we want to characterize this distribution here, or we want to sample from it. We tend to we, we need to use uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. So, what is a Markov chain Monte Carlo method? A method. Uh, well, the idea of a Markov chain Monte Carlo method is to create a Markov chain theta and L with invariant distribution mu y capital L. And perhaps the best known uh, MCMC method is the so-called metropolis Hastings algorithm, which works uh, as follows. So you iterate these two points. So you sample a proposal state set from a from a, a, a candidate state set, sorry, from a proposal distribution Q, and you set set as the new state of the chain with this probability alpha L. Otherwise, you reject it and you set the current state of the chain. Now this probability this um, this probability alpha L is the, the so-called metropolis Hastings ratio. And evaluating this alpha L involves evaluating the posterior at this new candidate state set, which in turn implies uh, solving these, uh, this forward model uh, at that new point. And once a sufficiently long chain has been obtained, we can estimate uh, expectations with respect to the, to the posterior of interest uh, with, the, with respect to the original posterior, sorry, of some quantity of interest Q of I, by first approximating this expectation with respect to the, the discretized posterior, the posterior mu y L, and then approximating this expectation here with a usual um, ergodic estimator given by this one. Now, the issue here is that the accuracy of this estimator is controlled by both N, the number of samples, and L, the accuracy of this uh, forward model, and in general, the number of samples that you need in the metropolis Hastings algorithm is quite large. Uh, and if for each sample you need to evaluate this complicated mathematical model, these, uh, this approach can quickly become uh, quite expensive. So the solution that we propose is to use uh, multi-level multi techniques uh, to try to, to lower the, the complexity of obtaining uh, uh, an expect of computer an expectation or estimate an expectation of this one. 
to what is multi-level MCMC? Well, instead of considering one fixed discretization level capital L, we introduce a hierarchy of discretization with curly L going from zero all the way to L, where each uh, discretization curly L induces uh, a forward operator FL with increasing accuracy and cost in such a way that FL goes to converges to the true model as L goes to infinity. So perhaps a bit more graphically, uh, what, what's going on is at level zero, we have a very coarse, very inaccurate uh, evaluation of our forward model, but also a very cheap one to compute. And as we refine on the levels, uh, F1 becomes a bit more, more precise, but also becomes more and more expensive. Okay, and having introduced this, uh, we can write this expectation here, the, region, the expectation with respect to the original posterior. We can first approximate it with, as the expectation with the discretized posterior mu y capital L, which we can in turn write in terms of these uh, telescoping sum right here. And now notice that it's important, it, well, it's important to notice that each, uh, each, each, each forward mapping operator FL induces in turn its own uh, posterior mu y mu y l or mu y l minus one in this case. Okay, so having written this expectation, this expectation here in terms of this telescoping sum, we can approximate this in, in terms of, uh, of the usual ergodic estimators, estimator on this form. Where here, this is, a, this is an ergodic estimator that samples from mu, mu y zero. Here is an ergodic estimator that samples from mu y l, and this is a, an ergodic estimator that samples from mu y l minus one. And again, to reiterate, it is worth mentioning that this theta ML is a sample from this posterior distribution mu y L that gets induced by, by this discretized forward mapping operator. And this theta L minus one is a sample from this posterior mu y L minus one that gets induced by, by the other um, forward mapping operator. And it is a fact of these uh, multi-level methods that if one is very careful on how one chooses the number of samples in such a way that one does less and less work as you go deeper on the, on the levels, one can obtain an estimator with the same accuracy as, as these guys you would do on, on a single level estimator, but with a much cheaper uh, cost. And in fact, there is some theory uh, uh, behind this. So on this seminal paper by Dudwell and all from 2015, it was shown that if there exists uh, an alpha, if there exists constants alpha, beta, and gamma, such that these four conditions are satisfied, namely that there is this sort of convergence in expectations with some rate alpha, that the variance of this difference here decays with some rate beta, that the mean square error of the ergodic of this ergodic estimator here can be bounded by the variance, and that the cost of sampling a, a QOI at, le at level L increases in this form, then you, it can be shown that there exists a hierarchy or, or, a, se or a sequence of uh, a decreasing sequence of samples in L that depend on the tolerance. Uh, such that the cost associated to obtaining um, a mean square error of this quantity here, it's smaller than or equal than some tolerance squared, um, increases on this form. So if you're familiar with Monte, Monte Carlo methods, uh, you can see the similarity here. There's just an additional log term. And perhaps uh, more interestingly so uh, is to, com to compare it with the cost of doing a single level version of this, which has this, uh, this increase here. And I know these are a bit ugly expressions, so perhaps a bit more graphically, the cost associated to a single level estimator uh, increases like this red curve here. Meanwhile, the cost associated to this uh, multi-level MCMC estimator increases as one of these three curves, depending on which uh, of the cases that you are on. However, there, there is a caveat, and it is that this condition T2 is a bit uh, tricky to verify, right? Because we want that the variance of this difference here to go to zero, but these uh, theta ML L and theta ML L minus one are samples from, from chains with different, um, with different invariant measures. So one way of guaranteeing that this, um, that this variance goes to zero is to, somehow construct these chains in such a way that this 
YML, this difference here becomes more and more, uh, well, becomes much, much smaller as, as, as you go deeper on the levels. And that in turn implies that we need to generate these couple, this, these chains uh, that have different uh, environment measures in such a way that they're like pathways, uh, pathwise uh, coupled. And that is the meat of the, of the whole algorithm. So maybe uh, to illustrate the point, if we want to compute an estimator of this form, here we have that the chain and levels targeting the posterior level zero, it doesn't get coupled with anything. So here we, do, we can just sample at level zero using our favorite type of uh, metropolis Hastings algorithm. And here for the higher levels, uh, starting from L equals one on the way to capital L, we sample the posterior level L minus one and L, in this case, the posterior level C, level zero and level one, we sample, we generate couple samples from, from, those, uh, from those posteriors in such a way that as we go deeper on the levels, we sample uh, less, less than this. Okay, and uh, so supposing that, that, that there exists a way of, of, of generating this, uh, this coupler function, the multi-level MCMC procedure to estimate this quantity of interest here will look as follows. So at level zero, we, we use our favorite metropolis Hastings type of algorithm to sample from this posterior mu y zero. And then uh, for all the higher levels, we use this uh, Oracle function coupler to generate this, uh, these coupled samples for ML samples. Okay. <clears throat> so of course, the most important part is, uh, okay, how can we create these, uh, this coupler function? And to do so, there are two main approaches. The first one is to couple chains using an independent sampler metropolis, which is more or less what it's advocated in this paper by Dodwell and all, and also on this paper uh, by Professor Tempone, Professor Noli, and myself. Or the second approach is to use a maximal coupling of two proposals Q and R, which is uh, what we advocate in this current work and what I will be discussing a bit later on. And of course, this uh, coupler uh, function uh, raises a couple of questions. <clears throat> As for example, does, does this procedure converge to, does this have an invariant measure? And if so, can we quantify its type of convergence? Can we quantify its error? And all of these are questions that have been studied mostly on this, uh, on this work too. But uh, because of time reasons, I'm not going to, to discuss in this, uh, in this talk. So let's talk about how to generate couple chains. So let's start, let's start with uh, discussing how to generate couple chains using this independent metropolis Hastings sampler. So giving a proposal distribution QL, if one can construct a two level couple independent metropolis Hastings sampler that we will denote by this uh, PLIMH uh, by following this procedure. So you sample a candidate state set from this proposal distribution QL. It's important to mention that this proposal should be an independent metropolis Hastings uh, type of proposal. So it, it, it should not depend on the current, current state of either chain. And you sample a uniform random number zero one. And then what you do is for both posteriors from the posterior level L minus one and the posterior level L, you, you accept or reject set as the as the current state of each chain with the usual metropolis Hastings ratio, um, comparing with respect to the same uniform random number uh, U. And what is the idea here is that since you're always proposing the same number to, to, both, to both chains, uh, if the chains, if both chains accept the same, the same number or if they are the same state and they both reject, then this, the, the chains stay uh, uh, synchronized. And the other intuition is that you would expect that this mu L and this mu L minus one to look uh, very, very similar, especially as you go deeper uh, on the levels. However, this kind of translates the problem on creating the coupler into choosing an appropriate uh, proposal QL. And again, there's a couple of ways of doing so. So on this original paper by Dotwell and all, they propose to, to uh, they, they take as a proposal uh, they propose to subsample from the samples that you obtained at the, at the previous posterior, which seems like a very natural idea. However, it's uh, easy to show that in, for a class of posteriors, this can give biased results. 
And in this work too, which can be thought of an extension of this work by Dudwell and all, uh, we extend the theory of this method to, to consider different, uh, a wider class of proposals QL satisfying some technical conditions, which are normally satisfied for the prior, a Laplace approximation, a KDE, but so in general, it's difficult to find uh, an appropriate proposal in, in high dimensions. And currently, uh, we're looking at some uh, machine learning ideas, but uh, we're still a bit, uh, uh, still a bit fresh. So not, not results. Enough. And here, just to illustrate the point on which uh, this algorithm by Dudley and all doesn't doesn't quite work. Um, so I, I present uh, two very simple examples. So we have two families of, uh, of Gaussians. So in this case, we have uh, this family of Gaussians that concatenate, that, that, is, that are contained one, one inside each other. And in this case, for this, uh, for this class of distributions where the support of mu y l is sort of containing the support of mu y l minus one, this method by Dudwell and all, this subsampling algorithm works quite well, because ultimately what you're doing is that you are proposing to this blue curve, when you're sampling for this blue curve, uh, samples that you obtained when you were sampling from this uh, white curve. So since um, since the support of, of these of these blue density is contained inside the support of this white one, then uh, then it will work quite well. However, if you have a family of distributions that look sort of like this, that it's uh, sort of like a, like a shifting family of, of, of Gaussians, then you can show that this method doesn't work. And the intuition behind it is that you're trying to explore this whole blue distribution by only sampling a subset of the samples that you, by only proposing a subset of the samples that you obtain for these, uh, when you were sampling this white curve. So, which amounts to only, to effectively only proposing from this uh, very uh, small overlap here. So what I do now is I implement their method and, uh, and our method is as a proposal, a very simple Gaussian which is uh, this, uh, denoted by this uh, dotted line here and here. And if we look at the histograms of the samples at different levels, we obtain as follows. So on the top rows, I um, plot the histograms obtained with our method. And on the bottom rows, I obtain the histograms obtained with this subsampling approach. And as we can see for this case where, where this density is concentrated inside one inside another, uh, both methods seem to target the right uh, marginals, but uh, in this case where you have these shifting Gaussians, it doesn't seem to be the case uh, for the subsampling algorithm, right? Like if you look at the histograms, it starts to it starts to degenerate. However, we're interested uh, not uh, we're usually interested in sampling Gaussians, and usually a Gaussian just a Gaussian proposal is not. Uh, is not suitable for realistic problems. So what we did in this work was to um, move a, a little bit apart from this idea of generating uh, independent proposals and then see if we can couple chains using uh, localized proposals. And to do so, we use a set of techniques that, it's, that is called a maximal coupling. So what is a coupling? Just a coupling, not a maximal coupling yet. So a coupling is um, given two probability distributions, Q and R, we say that a probability distribution gamma is a coupling of Q and R if these two conditions are satisfied. So if a joint sample from gamma has marginals R and Q, and if this uh, inequality holds, basically that the probability of theta L minus one being different than theta L uh, is bigger than or equal than the TV distance between Q and R, Okay, and we say it is a maximal coupling if this holds uh, with, uh, with equality, meaning that if Q and R are quite uh, close to each other, if you think of them as like being Gaussians, if they're quite close to each other, then the probability of them being different, of this uh, joint sample being different is, uh, is quite small, while at the same time uh, sampling, targeting, well, sampling the right, uh, the right margins. So here's an illustration of uh, three couplings. So it's worth mentioning that the couplings are not unique. Uh, maximal couplings are not unique and they exist under very weak uh, topological conditions. And here we have an example of just a coupling. So they're both, in, in all cases, this is a normal zero one and this is a normal 
to one. Okay, so here, if you look at the joint, you can see that, that they're completely uncorrelated. So uh, the, fact, the fact that they're equal almost basically never happens. However, in these two cases, we can see that if we look at the, at the joint, uh, at the joint marginal, at, at the joint uh, plot, sorry, uh, we see that there has a sizable uh, mass on this uh, on this diagonal. So whenever the samples are here, it means that that you sample the same uh, the same state. And it's worth mentioning that uh, these coupling ideas are not necessarily new. They have been around since the '80s, mostly uh, to construct uh, convergence arguments for uh, Markov chains. And they have recently started gaining more. Uh, more computational use, particularly here by these works by Pierre, Pierre Jacob, um, you know. And so what is our idea? Well, if, we, if you think of R and Q as a sort of a random walk metropolis proposal, what we, want, what we aim at doing is at coupling this, uh, is as, 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 uh, to sample these, uh, these two proposals using uh, a maximum coupling. So just a quick, uh, Example of how to of how to create a maximal coupling. So <clears throat> we want to sample theta prime l minus one from R and theta prime l from Q in such a way that it is indeed a maximal coupling. So meaning that the probability of them being different uh, is equal to the to the TV distance between Q and R. And what is proposed on this paper four is to use this sort of uh, mixture approach where with probability A given by this integral here, which you can think as, if you, if you look, if you, if you think of them as Gaussians, this would be the area of the overlap between, between both densities. So with probability A, you sample theta prime L from, from this distribution here and theta prime L minus, and set theta prime L minus one equal to theta prime L. Otherwise, you sample theta prime L from this distribution here, theta prime L minus one from this distribution here uh, independently. And it is straightforward to see that, uh, that the samples follow the, the, right, uh, the right marginals uh, in the sense that since, since these two cases are mutually exclusive, we can write this on this form, this, uh, this cancels here, this cancels here, and then uh, this mean cancels with this mean, and we end up with, uh, with this. A similar argument follow, uh, shows that theta L minus one is a, is, a, is a sample from R. And to show that it is in fact a maximal coupling, we want to show that this holds. Now that the probability of them being equal, uh, again, that only happens if we are in case one, we ha that happens with probability A. And if we uh, rewrite the minimum between Q and R in this form, uh, if we expand this minimum, then, uh, then we can easily show since these and these are densities that this probability is given by this term here and such it is a maximal copy. And uh, this type of, this sort of algorithm is the basis for more complicated uh, maximal coupling methods. To sample from this, you can do it via accept reject. And again, it's worth mentioning that uh, these maximal coupling algorithms are not, uh, are not unique. And further, algorithms to generate maximal couplings are presented in this work by Jacob. So how does this multi-level MCMC based on maximal couplings uh, look like? So level-wise, this uh, coupler function would look like this. So given a current state of the chain for both chains, you construct the coupling gamma n. You sample this joint state, you sample a uniform random number between zero and one W, and then you just, ac you just uh, accept or reject, uh, you just propose theta prime L minus one to the posterior level L minus one and theta prime L to the posterior level L and accept or reject using this, the usual metropolis Hastings algorithm, uh, comparing with respect to the same uh, uniform random number uh, W. So some characteristics about this method, is that it induces a joint kernel P, L, and C, that I'm going to denote as P, L, and C. And uh, it always, like if you, if you think again of these Q and R as being a step of random walk metropolis or precondition prime Nicholson, uh, it, it always samples from the right marginals. 
as opposed to the independent suburb metropolis, which requires a couple of technical conditions. And uh, you propose the same state here with probability one, if the current state of the chain, uh, if, the, if both chains are the current at the same uh, state. Otherwise, it proposes the same state with, uh, with this probability. Uh, this is the TV distance, which uh, of course this can become very, very small uh, if, uh, if the chains are too far apart, which could happen if one of the chains is accepting, uh, if, 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 one is, if one chain is accepting a lot and one is, uh, is uh, rejecting uh, quite often. And a solution to this issue that the chains can start diverging by, by quite a lot is to is to combine uh, combine this with a step of, of independent metropolis hastings. So in this case, we would produce a Markov transition operator of the form PCL, uh, for which with some probability omega, which is between zero and one, we take a step of independent metropolis hastings, and with some probability one minus omega, we do one step uh, of this. Uh, of this MLMC based on maximal components. And I investigate how this works a bit uh, more remote. So talking about numerical examples, so just as a sanity check, if we go back to the case with the, with the moving Gaussians and we implement the maximal coupling uh, method to get um, compared with the subsampling algorithm, uh, we get that the maximal coupling is able to target the right marginals, which shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a, a, a surprise because at the end of the day, it's just like if you were doing two uncorrelated uh, random one metropolis. And if we look at the synchronization rate at the same at the proportion of time that the chains are at the current state, we can see that as you go deeper on the levels, uh, both methods uh, the, it, for both methods the, the chains become more and more correlated, or yeah, among not autocorrelated, but correlated with respect to each other. And even though the, the, the subsampling algorithm is not able to target the, the, right, um, the right marginals, it, it has, a, it, it, it has a, a higher correlation than the maximal coupling method. So that uh, sort of uh, inspires the question of, if if we do this trick of combining both methods, can we get away with with the with the with the benefit of uh, of both approaches? Meaning that you're able to sample both uh, both marginals correctly while at the same time keeping uh, chains that are more correlated than this. And the answer is uh, yes. So <clears throat> just as a, again as a very simple sanity check, if we take as a quantity of interest just theta l, we can compute. Uh, the expectation, the expectation with respect to the posterior at level L in this uh, in this closed form. I should have mentioned that the normals have this form, so you, you know the mean exactly. And uh, what we do is we implement this uh, this joint uh, this mixture of uh, of maximal coupling with the, with independent metropolis Hastings for different values of uh, of omega, and we look at the bias of the of the expectation that you will get for these, uh, for the samples obtained with uh, with this algorithm, with different values of omega, and we obtain uh, the results uh, in these plots. Which, uh, to summarize them, it, it it means that even for relatively high values of omega, for like zero point seven, so if you, even if you do seventy percent of these uh, independent metropolis Hastings, uh, you're not getting a bias. Uh, for, for this case, you're, you're getting a very you're, you're not getting a bias here. While at the same time, even if you're doing these independent metropolis Hastings uh, very uh, very sparsely, uh, you get you get a much higher uh, synchronization than if you were just doing maximal coupling. So the take home message here is that it it is worth uh, doing this uh, this combined approach. And perhaps a bit more interestingly, we consider this, uh, this usual subsurface flow problem where we have an elliptic PDE, uh, where this uh, permeability field is modeled as this, uh, as this, uh, as this normal uh, random field. And 
based on based given some measurements of the of the hydraulic pressure you would in the domain we would like to estimate uh, expectations of this quantity of interest here which can be understood as the as the as the log uh, flow on 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 this boundary okay and to do so well we need to first introduce a discretization so we reordered this uh this uh, log permeability uh, log permeability term here and truncated after uh, capital K uh, terms. We introduce a sequence of discretization cur discretizations curly L ranging from zero to four, and for each uh, L, the solution to equation one to this elliptic PD that I had before is numerically approximated using uh, finite elements on a mesh of two L times twenty two by two L times twenty two piecewise linear elements. Uh, we generate some data Y by solving the this previous PDE using a discretization level L capital L star equal to six um, with uh, with theta K this theta K here which is where the randomness comes from uh, sampled from a Gaussian zero one with uh, one hundred and fifty terms and um, and observe the and observe uh, the solution at a grid of uh, four of four by four points inside inside the domain. And for our forward operator, and we construct our forward operator by setting k equals to fifty, uh, considering once again uh, l between zero and, and four. Um, and yeah, we, we we define our our forward operator as a solution of the PDE at level l using this log permeability here. Uh, with uh, 50 terms and uh, and observe that for a grid of four by four points. Um, yeah, and I should mention that the data is polluted by uh, one percent uh, noise. And as a prior, we just take this uh, this product of uh, of standard of standard Gaussians. So what we do is we implement our maximal coupling method with uh, omega given by 0 0.1 at level one, and for the other levels at uh, 0 0.5. And we begin with a, with a verification of our method. So what we do is we run our multi-level MCMC algorithm 50 independent times with uh, this number of samples per level, per run for each level. And what we want to first check is that the chain stays stay correlated, and two, to verify the assumptions on the complexity theorem that I, that I had a couple of slides ago. And as we can see, it works. So if we look at the at, at the plots of the quantity of interest for two different at, at two con, at two consecutive levels, uh, we have that for L equals one. They look like this. So they are not like super correlated. They they still concentrate a bit here on the diagonal, but they're not super correlated. But as we go deeper on the levels, they become more and more. Uh, strong, the, the, the correlation becomes more and more uh, strong. Uh, furthermore, if we if we want to further verify this, we can look at the proportion of the time where the chain stay synchronized, or in this case, the proportion of the times where the chain, the, where the chain stay desynchronized. So basically the proportion of the time where the chains are not occupying the same uh, state. Uh, and if we plot that uh, with, uh, versus the level, we get something that looks uh, like this. So as we can see, as we go deeper on the levels, uh, the proportion of the time that, uh, that the chains stay uh, occupy different states um, becomes, uh, becomes smaller and smaller. And furthermore, we can verify these, uh, these, these two assumptions on the, on, the, on, the, on the complexity theorem. Uh, this Convergence in expectation can be shown here, and this convergence uh, invariance can be shown uh, can be shown here. And a good point of this is that since we are combining this approach with uh, this independent metropolis Hastings uh, sampler, or the, yeah, with this independent metropolis Hastings sampler, that keeps getting a bit better and better as we go deeper on the levels. If we plot the autocorrelation. Uh, Functions uh, versus level, we, we see that uh, that this autocorrelation function becomes the case much much more uh, rapidly as we go uh, deeper on on levels. And lastly, since uh, 
having verified numerically that these uh, that these two conditions hold, uh, we can estimate the, the the optimal number of samples per level given by by this form, and under the assumption that the cost uh, of each quantity of interest grows uh, of evaluating quantity of interest grows uh, like this for gamma equals two, then we can get that for each of these uh, four tolerance, the number of samples would look uh, of, uh, in, in this form, or perhaps a bit more um, on a way that you would probably get more information if you were to compare the computational cost of this method with respect to the single level, to a single level estimator, the CPU time in seconds would grow um, like this. And so as we can see, there's roughly uh, two orders of magnitude cheaper to do the multi-level MCMC with respect to just MCMC, or even a bit more word in, in more words, uh, in, the sing, in, a, in a single level, we would need in a single level uh, approach at the finest uh, discretization, of the, sorry, at the smallest tolerance, we will need about 1 million PDE solves on the finest level, whilst with the multi-level MCMC approach, we will need just about uh, 10, 10 to the two uh, PD, PD solves. Okay, just some finalizing remarks. Uh, summary, we presented a novel MCMC method based on maximally couple proposals. As we can see, there's a large improvement over its non-hierarchical counterpart. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of details, experiments, theoretical results uh, that, that were not presented here, mostly on the on the theoretical analysis of these multi-level methods, but you can find them on this uh, archive paper. And lastly, some references. This uh, seminal paper by Dadwell and all, this is the first paper on, uh, on multi-level MCMC, at least that I'm aware of. Um, this paper here discusses uh, maximal couplings for different uh, for a different sort of for a different type of application. And these two works here, uh, this one that it's an archive and this one that we're finalizing are the, the meat of this uh, talk. Thank you.